Oh man. Anyway, well, apologies for if there's any. Um, you can just edit them out. So, I mean, as a rule, I don't edit, so the, the audience will just get a night delightful notification. <laughs> Cheers. I like. I like that. I like the raw and authentic. So good. I think I think we need more of those type of conversations. To be honest, I feel like some of these podcasts are just too over edited. I think. Yeah, you do get a lot of kind of. You feel like they almost need a laugh track because they're, they're, they're that overproduced. Yeah. Whereas I'm yeah. like, if, as long as you can hear both members clearly, mm. and I yeah. gradually improve that each year. Yeah. Through, through my setup. Um, yeah. And yeah. I've been doing a hundred and however many I've done so far. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, did you, so how, how did it all start for you um, in terms of the, the, the kind of the podcasting and stuff? Cause I mean, obviously you, your background is in, um, is it design? So you didn't say you, so you didn't have a design background, but you, you've kind of been dabbling in um, all sorts. Yeah, I mean, so we'll, we'll, we'll kick off. I'll tell you what. We'll yeah, bring this to this. This. Welcome to the podcast, Tara. Mm-hmm. I I wasn't actually sure who I was going to get. I know. I wanted Instagram, Rebecca to be here. Yeah. It just says Crosby <laughs> Collective, and I was like, hmm. I know. I know. Actually, Who's this Crosby Collective? Yeah. Um, so yeah, to to tell you, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about podcast and where I'm from. Um, yeah. So essentially, I started doing the podcast in 2017. Mm-hmm. And I I started doing it just off the basis that I wasn't doing too much in terms of video output. My degree yeah. is in video, and yeah. I studied contemporary lens media, um, okay. so photography and film. And then I wasn't doing anything with video because I'd kind of abandoned uh, short film and and feature film and chasing that dream because mm-hmm. my interest in technology just wasn't there. Yeah. And in order to succeed in that, you kind of need it. Yeah, um, I've always been more interested in the concept, and I was talking yeah. to a lot of friends, having a lot of coffees, as you do, um, and decided, oh, well, it'd be great just to start recording these mm. and and generate somewhere where we can actually get a discussion going um, yeah. and and hear about people's ideas and hear about their passions because it felt mm. felt like that was a lot of what my conversations with coffee were was just yeah. talking about the things they were doing at the time, what was interesting yeah. them. Um, and kind of pulling it all together, which is why I kind of reach out to people like yourself when I see a passionate project going on. I'm like, yeah. we should check. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So most That's of what I do now stuff. is um, I do a lot of illustration. Uh-huh. That's my main thing. Um, yeah. And then I, I'm heavily involved in, in kind of zine making. Yeah. Um, and then just anything I get my hands on. I'm, I'm one of those mm-hmm. creatives. I do a bit of everything. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's so good. Um, so how about you? I mean, what what for, for the people listening at home? Obviously, mm-hmm. I know you via the Instagrams. Uh, mm-hmm. Who are you, and what do you do, Tara? So, um, I, I guess my my main interest is around um, sort of space creation. Um, so, I guess what that looks like is. Um, especially sort of something like we're doing with the Crosby Collective um, in Scunthorpe is it's about how do you sort of create a space for people um, and and people in the community to come and explore ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, my passion has always been around kind of community development. So how do you uh, see kind of communities transform themselves, you know, rather than it be about um, essentially somebody coming in and sort of trying to, do a cool project or anything like that. How do you actually create a space where people can kind of explore those ideas that they have? Um, and so, I mean, my, my background is I actually trained to be a teacher um, okay. to start off with uh, all the way back in South Africa. Um, and yeah, essentially uh, I was an English and drama teacher, but I guess I, um, I, get, I guess I started to see a real, um, need you know when it comes to you know all the things that are happening sort of in communities where um, there's just obviously there's great projects that are happening but I mm-hmm. think in terms of looking at something that's sustainable um, and that actually has a business model around it I think there wasn't there wasn't something that I was seeing and so and so yeah so I guess that's kind of a, a bit of a, a short um, sort of synopsis of it but I think I really am interested in how do we create these spaces that that 
enable people to just explore their ideas, you know, whether they be business yeah. or otherwise. I think that's kind of interesting. I think it's something which I've talked about because I, I mean, I get a lot of um, creatives on the podcast just because I know yeah. through, through various people. And it's one of those conversations which comes up quite a lot is that balance between business and art and yeah. the artists don't know how to run a business and a lot of business yeah. people don't know how to create engaging content. Yeah. Um, so you, you do a lot of learning just to kind of get that. And that's why a lot of businesses fail so early on mm-hmm. is because they don't have that balance. Either you, you're doing yeah. too much business focused on too much profit or you're yeah. focused on being an artist and being a creative. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you kind of lose sight of that bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, just just a, as a note, you were you say you studied English and drama as a, to to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah, two of the most terrifying subjects I could think of as a teacher yeah. <laughs> to actually yeah. comfort. Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I you mentioned you from South Africa. How long have you yes. been in the UK? So, I'm um, pretty much just over ten years now. So, I came over in 2010. Oh. So, yeah, so it's been a bit a decade. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Open Scunthorpe. Uh, of all places. What's that say? And you ended up in Scunthorpe of all places. <laughs> so I spent yeah, I spent seven years in London and then and then I, I followed a girl up north um and uh so find myself um near kind of Grimsby and yeah. um and yeah, so that's kind of where I got got into the area. So so that's, that's the story. Yeah. yeah. I always I mean, so I'm a bit of historical fiction about me. I'm from Scunthorpe. Okay. Um, I'm, okay, I'm, that's good to know. Yeah, I'm I'm born and raised in Scunthorpe. Um, so at the minute I'm in Lincoln. This is where yes. I, where I live. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I, I, whenever I kind of go back, or whether I kind of see things about Scunthorpe, at the start of the year I did a, a podcast interview with the uh, pop up. Yes. Um, yes. We were with Cafe Indie. Indie. Yeah. Yes. I did one with them, and it was it was kind of one of those things that whenever I go back, I always try to see what's actually going on. Yeah. In hometown, when I visit my parents, yeah. and and it, that is essentially how I how I discovered you. Was oh, brilliant! Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, the guys guys from Pop Up Skunto have been. We've kind of been ca- connecting with them on a few different levels, and um, they 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 were a part of our accelerator program mm. that we ran sort of at the beginning of lockdown, just to test out like how do you actually support people during this time, um, and so but but I think obviously we've been crossing paths quite a bit but they're a great great group of guys yeah i think it's, it's interesting from an outside perspective to see um these kinds of projects pop up in a town like mm. Scunthorpe. i mean obviously yeah. i have a fair, fair knowledge of its kind of history and yeah um what it does and doesn't do in terms of supporting small business yeah. and creative endeavors so it's, it's it's really good to see um it's like a, yeah i mean i think that the interesting with Scunthorpe, i think in some ways because i don't know um I mean, to an extent, I know what's been tried and tested, um, but I think in, in some ways it, it's been a an advantage to me um, because I haven't necessarily come with um, any sense of pessimism mm. um, when it when it's come to sort of doing something like this. So I think that's been something that's been quite um, interesting. I mean, I've always spoken about um, this idea that um, you, in order to create something sort of within an area um, you almost have to have to have three different actors involved you have to have the um, relocators you know people like myself that have come from outside the area have experienced a different world you need to have the returners people that have come that have gone away and come back and experience a certain level of success and then sort of come back to that location and then the, the remainers the people that have actually chosen to stay there and I think if you start to do projects with all those three people involved, then you start to see projects that actually thrive. And But I think often what happens is that there's somebody that comes with a good idea, tries to implement a project, mm. um, and, and it fails because they're just a relocator. You know, they don't actually – it's not bringing everybody to the table. And I think that's what was always the heart behind the Crosby Collective. Or it, was, it was about how do we sit around the table together, mm. um, very similar to this – podcast really you know how do we just start with a conversation yeah so i mean how many of you are there involved in the collective so i mean basically what happened i mean i'd probably say at the moment there's kind of between 20 about about 20 of us um that are involved to greater or lesser extents obviously because of lockdown you know people's circumstances have changed but i think what we did was um 
in, in the lead up to actually launching the space. Obviously, the space is launching at the end of this year, mm -hmm. but the reality was, was that we had to test the concept. And so it's been a two year process of testing kind of smaller concepts of the Crosby Collective mm -hmm. in other community spaces, above shops, you know, all sorts okay. of things, just to sort of test out kind of what is it that, what can we actually do um, in Scunthorpe that is feasible? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and, and also to just understand, you know, and give people an experience of what it might look like, you know, even if it's in a micro form, almost yeah. just prototyping it um, constantly. So that's kind of been the, the, the journey. That's really, that's really interesting. I, I mean, so in terms of, um, obviously you're finishing towards the end of the year or, or setting up to launch at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, that's got to have been a challenge this year. <laughs> I think when I kind of saw the extent of when you, you did a tour recently of kind of what, what situation you're in. Um, and I looked around, I was like, that, that's brave. You know, it's, yeah. it's brave to try and set something up this year and launch it yeah. at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously you can't have been expecting that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah. Is it, is it, do you think it's been kind of motivation to keep going or do you think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a really good question. I mean, I think the motivation, I think we saw the need, you know, obviously mm -hmm. as we prototyped it and, and tested it out, I think in some ways, I think COVID has been quite a refining process for us because we, we've, we both, I bought on staff in March, um, mm -hmm. April of this year. Um, and obviously that's obviously when things went into lockdown. So I think we've really been able to build team and figure out kind of how we best work together. Because obviously, mm -hmm. You know, if we had launched when we wanted to, which would have been probably May, June, you know, in, you know, without COVID, yeah. um, like the reality is, is that I think the space that we would have created would have potentially not have had really been as thought through as it has been now. Yeah. Um, and also, I think, I think the journey, like you you saw on the guided tour, um, the journey of um, people getting involved in Instagram, we weren't able to really... Um, uh, engage with our um, Instagram audience as much as we have been able to do over this period. Um, so I think, in yeah, I think you know, I think there's. I, I recognise that. I think in order for it to recover and, and people to feel a sense of confidence to come back into a, a space like that, it's going to take between six and nine months. So we're not we're not expecting there to be this um, surge of people sort of coming to the space. Um, from when we open, we actually just think that um, we just need to create the space and just see what happens, you know, um, yeah. and, and take it from there. Because ultimately, our, you know, you know, our, it's a project. Ultimately, it's it's a project that's going to be over kind of two, three years. Mm -hmm. And if if we show that it works, and that's the purpose of this this exercise, yeah. th then we can continue doing it. So um, yeah, that's kind of the 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 crux of it, really. Yeah, I think I was, I was recording uh, recently with another guest, um, Lauren Pincher. She's a, a painter, lives down in Norwich. Um, we were yeah. discussing this whole idea that during lockdown, you've seen kind of quite a twist in terms of initial ideas and what people are kind of executing. Um, and yeah. obviously, you've got artists and creators and business makers who've been at home mm -hmm. and they've they've kind of found themselves stunted, like unable to make, unable to do things. And then you've got the converse side of that, of seeing people who generally wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Suddenly going, oh, well, I need to do something. So I need to get involved and do, do all these yeah. little bits. And the way yeah. we, we kind of worry is it's kind of, it's thinning the wheat um, yeah. in terms of projects which were yeah, kind just, of only partly supported or yeah. maybe just an idea they were doing for the sake of doing an idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to start something like you guys have, in a situation where you're already already facing a challenge before you've even mm -hmm. got the challenge of just proving that the concept works. Works, um, yeah. I think bears work good for you in the future, yeah. essentially. Yeah, no, I think it's spot on. I think I think it's a really interesting analogy that I think it's, it's definitely been true for us. I think, mm -hmm. you know, just knowing where to spend our time and where to spend our energy and, and, and who to spend our energy with, because I think that's also, yeah. I think the people that we've come across during this time has been amazing. People that have just come to offer their support, mm -hmm. offer their services, has been, yeah, they're really, really incredible. So, so the, um, the space you're you're occupying, if yeah. I'm if I know my my Scunthorpe geography correctly, is it's a former library, right? Like, exactly, a former yeah, public yeah. library, and you, inside yeah. of it, you're putting in a community library, 
and then workshop spaces is that one, one way yeah so i mean essentially the idea is is to have still have a, a community library and which will kind of function as a bit of like a coffee shop library um so we we thought that that i think cafes and libraries go really well together so we I mean, just that's, thought that's the dream right there I that's mean, a great shop exactly library, that's, you know. um <laughs> And so the coffee, um, the coffee shop, which is the public access point in terms of people being able to come in and, and but also have a bit of retail. And so I think we, we saw there, there was a potential for people to actually exhibit, you know, and to sell, whether it be artwork or whatever they created. And then basically in that space, there's, a, there's kind of a, a gap in the, in the bookshelves that basically enters into the, what we're calling the office or the co-working space. Um, and so that's kind of the, the clean working, you know, kind of the people just working on their, their laptops or, you know, or designing bits and bobs, you know, so we've got a central table and then kind of a few pods that we're, we're playing around with. Um, and then essentially the room. So in the existing library, there was this like wraparound room that basically was just used for storage of books. Um, and so that's basically what we're turning into kind of a factory and a studio, which is basically where, um, we're going to kind of host a few different businesses that um, need that space to sort of start. Um, some of them are just getting started, but then obviously, like you said, the workshop space is going to be that multifunctional space where our members can basically use it for, you know, stuff that they want to do, whether they're hosting a, an exhibition or they're wanting to do a photo shoot or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. So it's, 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 a, it's a small space in, in, in terms of what we actually want to do with it. Yeah. But I think we're wanting to prove the concept so that we can do it in other spaces too. Um, yeah. So that's the idea was is to kind of go, because obviously libraries are becoming redundant. Um, yeah. So, and, and the thing is, I think the, the, the community library also is in some ways kind of a weaker form of the, the library service it feels like. And so like actually, if we did it properly and we did it with a business model behind it, could we make it something more meaningful for those communities, you know. It's quite a strange transition for libraries, I think, especially the last yeah. kind of few years, obviously public funding got cut and we, there was so many library closures. And I think it yeah. seems like a decade ago, there was protests mm -hmm. about closing libraries and then they still closed yeah. libraries and yeah, yeah. All that kind of politics yeah. goes with that. Um, yeah. So it is interesting to see kind of how they develop and what people are having to do with them. Cause I, I know like within the, the US at least, a lot of their, they don't have kind of stationary libraries. A lot of their libraries are mobile because mobile. they're such a big country. Um, yeah. Whereas in the yeah. UK, like, I like the idea of it, but at the same time, we are a very small country. So it's, it mm. seems kind of futile, but well, I mean, having yeah. multi-purpose It's interesting places. that you talk about mobile. Yeah, but it's yeah. interesting you talk about mobile libraries because I think the one mobile library that was in North Lincolnshire, I think, was actually operating from that library that we've just, um, so, yeah. I yeah. think I think there's definitely a need for something mobile, but in terms of, I think what was happening with that one specifically, it was just being used for storage, you know. Yeah. So, I think there's, you know, a, a lot of the communities I think deserve better, you know, when it comes to actually, you know, if it's there, if the space is there, and I think the same can be said of community centres. I think community centres are also becoming, um, yeah. you know, few and far between. I think um, as well, like the, there's a challenge there as well, um, just kind of in terms of fighting a stigma which kind of comes with with kind of community centers and and community libraries and things like that yeah i mean especially in in kind of small small northern towns you yeah. do get that whole level of oh well you know you have a community center but a community center is just hung out by with loo with youths and and yeah. antisocial behavior and all that kind of stuff especially i mean being from scotland I yeah. know most of the the stereotype which comes with yeah. being from Scunthorpe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it is nice to kind of see outside forces coming in and being like, well, no, you know, you don't have to represent it in this way. You can mm. make useful spaces which people can actually mm. be motivated by. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think the thing, the interesting thing that you say there is that you know, the reason why we got involved with this library to start off with was because of the antisocial behavior that some of the kids were perpetrating sort of against the space um, and against the building. And I think a lot of it is not their fault. I think the reality is, is that, you know, they were climbing up on the building. It's got a beautiful, um, you know, if you do climb on top of Park Library, yeah. there is an amazing um, view out, out onto, the, onto the wind farms and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But I think 
if, if a building has no um, relevance to you, why, why wouldn't you climb it? You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just like, I think in some respects, what I've always said or what I've started to say more now is that I think the young people that um, were a part of destroying that library will be the ones that rebuild it, you know, in the sense that I think we've spent a lot of time with those young people, you know, really trying to think about what is it that we can actually do in that library space that will be aspirational mm -hmm. and that will ultimately show them another world, you know, because I think that's where creativity comes in because I think creative people um, and creative projects have the ability to show people another world. Yeah. And if we can allow that to happen, um, I think that would be quite an amazing example of, of, of the need for creativity sort of in spaces and in, in communities that, that have become forgotten, you know? Yeah. So. I think it's, it's one of those, you, you, you kind of, it's a trope you see a lot in films of, of people going into deprived neighborhoods and saving the neighborhood and that kind of thing. Yeah. I, I always yeah. kind of see it's up as it's, it's not someone which necessarily needs saving. I think no. There's a, a great opinion I got from um, kind of my dad growing up because he grew up in Riddings um, oh, down, at, down yeah. in that part of Scunthorpe. And he yeah. essentially told me when I was much longer, younger is you can basically do whatever you want, but people yeah. will always tell you that because you're from Scunthorpe that you'll amount to nothing. And wow. yeah. I think that was something which kind of always stuck with me of like, right, so it doesn't really matter what I think anyone else thinks of me because mm. they'll always see me as a negative. So I'll do whatever mm. I want anyway. And I think... It's a very, it's, a, it's kind of an undercurrent which comes with, especially lower income communities, is that mm -hmm. they are told from a very young age, well, you know, you're a problem. You're going to be yeah. a problem. And then yeah, when, yeah. like, as you say, you get a, a space which has been essentially abandoned or is of no use to them. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, you're going to explore it in a way which isn't intended. You know, you're going to yeah. climb atop of a bus shelter because the yeah. buses don't yeah. run. You know, you're yeah. going to break in somewhere and do some graffiti yeah. because there's yeah. nowhere else to do anything. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. yeah, connecting with that is is extremely valuable. Um, yeah. For those, yeah. Those kinds of groups. Yeah. I mean, so in terms of obviously, you're, you're very business focused, yeah. if you don't mind me saying. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you? Do you get involved in kind of creative side? I've seen your sketches and stuff, uh, which you've shown. Yes. Yeah, so so that's. Yeah. So Rebecca, who's our facilitator, um, obviously, yeah, that's you know, in terms of. Um, my kind of creative um, sort of flexing my creative muscle. I think a lot of it is, um, I guess, more in the in the in the form of ideas um, and sort of helping people that have those ideas, um, you know, basically execute them. Um, so I think at the moment, obviously, drama was my background, um, and I, I enjoyed drama and everything like that. But I think what what I'm at the moment, sort of my creativity is kind of lived through you know, just trying to work with people that, that, that have creative ideas um, and that just don't know how to execute them or mm -hmm. either, you know, it's, it's a case of sort of, like you say, building that kind of business base to kind of go, actually, how can we just create a platform so that people know about what you're doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the connection with the schools, obviously. And that's kind of where the school kind of comes in is actually our, our interest, obviously, in creating spaces like this is ultimately we want the people that exit the schools that we work with, mm -hmm. you know, to have um, opportunities that, that, that might not necessarily have been available to them, you know, if, if a space like this potentially didn't exist. Yeah. I mean, do you, yeah. see, do you find when you meet um, kind of small business owners or uh, creative people, when you, you kind of have to break down to them, that it does need a viability option in terms of running a business. Do you find that a struggle or is that something where people are actually a bit receptive to it? Like, oh, well, no one's ever actually broken this down to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think, I think that in some ways, yeah, I think there is an element of, um, like you say, just kind of looking at the, like what you referred to earlier, the kind of the bottom line. Um, but I think in some ways you don't want to lose that passion. You don't want to lose the thing that actually got them creating in the first place. And so I think a lot of it is about really networking people because I think a lot of people are isolated, you know, just, you know, even before COVID, like I think people just don't know who to reach out to. And I think a lot of, I guess, what we're trying to do with the Crosby Collective is look at what that ecosystem looks like for people to actually, you know, not just rely on me or rely on, 
an individual, but actually rely on a community. Um, because I think that's often what, what's lacking is, is just a, a network that enables people to thrive. Because I think, especially like you say, where you've been told, like what you've been told, like you, you had, um, and, and people, you know, in similar situations, I think there's something about that narrative that needs to be challenged. Um, yeah. And so, and so, yeah, I think people are receptive, but I think, but I think the reality is, is that we, you almost need to introduce a community. And I think that's something that we're still trying to figure out well, how we do that. Yes, we've got the space, mm-hmm. but how do we actually build a community around that, you know? Yeah, space becomes kind of step one. <clears throat> Our idea becomes step one, space becomes step yeah. two. And I think that's yeah. something I've kind of seen time and again where people have at least, at least suggested an idea to me um, yeah. and then said, oh, I've got this. And I'm like, right, well, what else have you got in terms yeah. of any kind of step from that? Yeah. And they're like, well, I don't know about that, but I don't, you know, I haven't figured that bit out. And I'm like, okay, yeah. well, come, come back to yeah. me in, in six months. Yeah. <laughs> when you yeah, yeah. push that through. Um, yeah. I, it's, it's, it, it's quite a strange one to kind of um, not get my head around, but I think mm-hmm. it, it doesn't go on uh, as discussed as it, as it should in terms of mm-hmm. combining um like organizations is you you end up with a lot of kind of what what would be called gatekeeping of yeah. just making things accessible you know yeah um, you know it's like with yourself it's like you've got your, your company and your website and blah, blah 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 it's like right if you were someone who wanted to do something very similar it, it, getting that information is a is mm. a huge challenge for a lot of people and yeah. i think balancing that and balancing how you get that information out can be, yeah. can be quite a challenge um yeah it's it's, it's trying yeah making that engaging is is a, is a mm. balance as well because i know if i read a tax return i hate that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i think but i think but business support as a whole like i think mm. has become so drained of any life um yeah. that you know like it has to be done in the context of risk and um in the context of community because if, if it's done in like you say where it's just the humdrum of business and you, and business plans. Because, I mean, some, some of the best businesses that I know of don't even have a business plan. You know, they, they didn't ever do that. And I think, I think it's, it's not about doing the tick box exercise with people when actually all you need to do, like you said, is, is just get them to that step one mm-hmm. um, of just creating something and just putting it out there, just prototyping it, you know, seeing how people respond to it and then get that kind of validation. Because I think... Like I, I just think of this one lady um, that we've come across who makes these amazing kind of like 3D cards, you know, kind of where it's cut out and it, uh, it kind of, um, but she kind of went to a Christmas market last year and didn't sell a single one. Yeah. Um, and it was because it was the wrong Christmas market. It was like this, like the, this kind of community Christmas market that nobody goes to anyway. Yeah. Um, and like, and she just didn't get that validation to be like, actually, this is a great, great product. Like, mm-hmm. how can we just, um, make sure that it's done to a, qual- a decent quality and then we can get it sold, you know, and, and she just never had that experience of actually just selling something. Yeah. And there doesn't need to be any business model. Just, just that feeling that actually somebody else wants to buy what you've created. Yeah. You know, um, I think there's, so, there's a risk with initial small ideas as well. Of like you, you, you instantly look for instant gratification when, yeah. when attempting anything. You're like, Oh, I've got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> brought it into the real world fantastic i'm going to push it out yeah. i'm going to give it to people oh it yeah. didn't come back how i wanted it to what do i do now uh, and, and yeah, yeah you know your panic and anxiety yeah. sets in running your, your small business and reality yeah. kind of overwhelmed so yeah I, th- I think a lot of people do need to t- not take a step back but view mm-hmm. a wider a wider wider perspective and sample things and expect things to take a bit longer than they do sometimes yeah yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and I think, I mean, I think from our experience, you know, I think because people just haven't got that, um, that, that kind of feedback loop, I think often there's just not that ability for them just to get, get that, you know, that prototype one, prototype two, prototype three. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think, and, and again, this is also where the maker space comes into it. Like, I think we originally were going like, let's, you know, get a 3D printer, let's get like a, a CNC machine, let's get a laser cutter, you know, get all these things. But I think what we were actually coming to terms with now is the fact that actually those might not be the best piece of equipment to buy. Let's just actually just see who's in front of us, who starts coming to the space and start to 
invest as we as we see the need and as we see the demand because I think a lot of maker spaces um, sort of try and get you know every sort of fancy little piece of equipment and I think ultimately there's no there's no demand for it it's just it's just you know your typical maker space which yeah. which I think in some ways I think that's run run its course in, in my in my estimation yeah. um, in terms of the maker space models um, but maybe that's just what I've seen. I mean, it, it, I think it it does become that kind of there is a, a lack of appreciation for very basic things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even as someone who makes products and 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 kind of gets information out there, like I make uh, t-shirts and posters yeah. and, and zines. Yeah, and I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Most of that I do through a very small print shop in Lincoln, um, nice. and the the only way I'm able to do it through them is that they do small runs. You know, they yeah. they, they do produce small runs. And I know going through uni, um, getting photo prints was a huge yeah. challenge, um, yeah. and a huge, huge cost. So having access yeah. to, you know, basic photocopiers, printers and stuff like that, when you think of, when I, when I think of photocopiers as being a teenager, I'm like, well, where do I go for a photocopier? Post yeah. office, maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. who, who knows? Yeah. Staples, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah. which no longer exists. Um, yeah. And it's going to cost me an arm and a leg. That's not accessible. Yeah. That's not, and it's a printer. That's all it. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, yeah. that, that's come up time and time again, though. Um, mm-hmm. Is is, uh, is, the, is is printing like we yeah. uh, another business that started or did our accelerator program. You know, they were, you know, that that's really all that he needed um, mm-hmm. was 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 a printer, a decent printer where he could play a bit with the, the color balance and the type of quality of paper. Yeah. Um, and, and that would have been sort of a real benefit to him. But, um, but yeah, I think that's it. But I mean, I think from your side, Graham, like growing up and knowing the context of Scunthorpe, you know, if you rewind to, you know, Graham kind of uh, leaving school, like what, and, and, and kind of, you know, potentially going across to Lincoln, because did you study in Lincoln? In terms yeah, of, did you do I came here for or? study and then I, I kind of got trapped. Um, so <laughs> you, you kind of, you stay, because um, you, yeah. you I think Lincoln has this this strange thing of it's a city, mm. um, but it lacks all of the things which you expect from a city. <laughs> but the way it keeps you is by keeping the rent cost cost really low. <laughs> so you you end up just staying because you're like, oh well, it's really affordable to live here, so I don't actually yeah. have to earn that much. Um, yeah. oh, but there is no prospects. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> ten years later, um, and we're still here. Um, yeah. But I mean, in, in terms of your your journey, I mean, because I'm 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 almost looking at it from a learning perspective. Like, yeah. what, yeah, like if if something like the Crosby Collective existed way back then, you know, what what would it what would have been a benefit to you in terms of um, space, in terms of you know testing out the ideas, uh, you know, that you you're doing now? Like, how would it have accelerated what you what you're doing now? If that's a to, I think it's an interesting question because it's something which I've kind of I've, I've mulled over before of mm. what happens if I stay. Um, like yeah. I, when I finished uni, I moved back. Yeah. For uh, I think it was about a year. Um, mm-hmm. I was back in Scunthorpe, and during that time, I was just unemployed. Yeah. Um, and I ended up moving to Lincoln with my my partner at the time because we were yeah. like, well, we can get a house together; it's reasonable cost, and then we'll yeah. find jobs um, yeah. doing that. And I actually went through um, the Prince's Trust. Yeah. Um, and did a, a young ambassador program with them, got a mm-hmm. little bit of funding to actually get a PC so I could actually start doing things and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I think of Scunthorpe, it's kind of one of those places of you, because it's a very small town, mm-hmm. you go to uni is one, so you can network and meet a lot of people, but it, mm-hmm. two is just to get the feedback, as you say, mm-hmm. and the access to materials because yeah. it's just, it was never there. Um, mm-hmm. Even when I think of kind of um, senior school, so I went to Frederick Goff, yeah, um, and then college I went to John Leggett. Mm-hmm. So it was a very clear, streamlined line, and I hadn't mm-hmm. actually intended to go to uni. I, yeah, I, I was yeah. there going. I'd, I'd, I have no intention to go into uni. It's a cost mm-hmm. I don't want. It's going to leave me mm-hmm. with debt. Um, mm-hmm. But there is no other option at the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, a recession hit whilst I was in uni, so that, that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's kind of very much when you when I think of those locations and I think of what they offered, mm-hmm. <clears throat> what they they fail to offer is again that feedback, that opportunity for experimentation, that yeah. opportunity for 
for just suggesting ideas and, and learning those things um mm. and even outside of kind of like an experimental uh creative side mm. the the opportunities you saw in terms of oh so you'd like to set up a small business or you'd like to mm. see, do this that and the other they were always yeah. very um what i call either academic or practical solutions mm. they were very yeah. Oh, you want to start a small business and clearly you want to go off and be a hairdresser or you clearly yeah, yeah. want to go off and be a builder, in which case you can do this, 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 and this. Mm. And obviously with the creative industry, even when it's something um, which does involve a practical aspect, yeah. you, you don't have a streamlined way of doing that. There is no streamlined no. way of getting people engaged with your content, no. creating. Um, yeah. And you see, I think I see a lot of it now in terms of whenever I go to Nottingham, mm-hmm. um, they have a lot of uh, indie businesses and a huge area which is set up with nothing but independent businesses and yeah. things like that because the city itself mm. has done a lot to allow them to be there. You know, they lowered yeah. rental costs. Um, yeah. There's a graffiti, graffiti store down there which sells mm-hmm. paints and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But the city allowed them to use a building which was set to be demolished to practice. Oh. Yeah, it's wow. like you know, we're not using it. We've put boards up around it. As long yeah. as whatever you paint isn't offensive, yeah. use, use it to teach you lessons. And I think yeah. that is something which I've never lived in mm. a city or a town where that communication between council and mm-hmm. school and mm-hmm. business has ever really mm-hmm. existed. That's um, yeah. And that was kind of like when I was uh, looking at uh, Pop Up and when I kind of got to know them and learning about mm-hmm. Cafe Indie and it's kind of. Mm-hmm community aspects and those kinds of things it's like this it shouldn't be Mm. you know as shockingly good as it is Mm. but i'm not used to it in my hometown you know i'm not used to people taking a chance and allowing Mm. it you know when i think of the high street i think there's so many spaces you could do things with you know there's so many spaces where you could allow someone reduced rate for the first two years so they could set up a business you could you could give someone lessons on accounting workshops on how to run a a tax return in the first year and it's it's those little knowledge buckets and as much as like yourself taking risks and Mm -hmm. encouraging these ideas it does need that that business back yeah it it needs that government seal of approval that this can happen in one way or another Mm -hmm. i mean that's something i I kind of find now like lincoln as a city Mm -hmm. doesn't take opportunities um on small businesses no it it just doesn't i mean i think an example would be the the drill hall which is the theater here recently Mm -hmm. closed Mm because it couldn't secure government funding um mansions of the future which was a not too dissimilar to what you did yeah yeah yeah, mansions of the future um was funded for a certain period of years Mm. but with no plan as to what to do with afterwards they couldn't secure funding so that's closed this year um so that's it Mm. that's that's the two things which were kind of there um Mm -hmm. and when you talk to you know higher people and people who control the the locations and mm. the accessibility of everything it's very much from an idea perspective of well, we want to attract big businesses here so we can attract yeah. income to the city rather yeah. than thinking of it from a point of view of well if we supported the ideas which are here in the first place we could yeah. develop a base and then yeah. build from that base and yeah. that, that site isn't just there but I think, do you think that to that point, like, because I've always been interested in kind of what happened in Hull in terms of obviously with the city yeah. of culture and stuff like that, because a lot of the, the commentary that I'm hearing and, and I guess from people there is that kind of that bubbles popped in, in some senses, because obviously what's happened with um, that kind of injection of money into it for the city of culture and that kind of false sense of, um, you know, with people coming through and, you know, kind of, helping businesses sort of get up but actually a lot of those businesses that potentially started obviously i don't have the data to back it up but yeah. i think i heard that there was something along those lines where obviously that model of like attracting bigger businesses actually didn't work out in the long run because yeah. actually you know it was it, it, it was something that was done sort of in a in a tokenistic way you know and not done in a way that was actually truly supporting the the, the small business it was just a um, it, I think is is one of these things, and, and not to get um, too political in terms of that that whole aspect, um, mm. is 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 such a strange dynamic. Um, I mean, if you look at Sheffield, 
for instance. Mm. Um, Sheffield received funding a few few years back, maybe a decade or two back, um, and yeah. they really turned it around because yeah. they put all their money into music venues and into building um, small independent businesses, which yeah. they didn't. They weren't interested in getting a cash injection to attract no. other people to the city. They no. wanted to take that money and support what was there. Yeah, all started well you know it mm. got its museums and, and whatnot and it became the city of culture and got that tagline mm. but as you say like it really just failed to give that support past oh here's some money and then yeah. when it failed mm. they have the opportunity to basically blame the small businesses because it's yeah. oh we, well we gave you the funding you've been asking for yeah. for years and then you you, yeah. you you can't so therefore it's not supportive mm. um, and like i was i was down in uh, norwich Mm-hmm. this weekend and it's interesting to see because i'd say norwich is very much similar to lincoln in mm-hmm. terms of everything you know it's got yeah. a long history it's got uh, a, f- a large farming community so your population mm-hmm. isn't as big as you expect it to be despite the size of the county yeah. yeah all of their businesses are essentially small businesses wow you know most of their big stores are crammed in then they're, mm-hmm. they're not they're not given a lot of real estate and well, the amount of times we were walking around and a friend would point out say, oh well this is an empty shop front but you can rent it for free mm-hmm. for a week well, to do whatever well, you want with and that's you know yeah you you know you take care of the 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 tax side of it and all that kind of stuff but it's yeah. just an open space and the, the the council will let you use it and you're like that shouldn't be as mind-blowing as it is like yeah, that, yeah, sh- yeah. that shouldn't be a thing and I, it surprises yeah. me when you get small towns like you know mm-hmm. Scunthorpe, Gainsborough, Grimsby, who just don't do that. You're like, you know, you're in a perfect position because you've essentially yeah. got nothing to lose by just re- supporting yeah. everybody. Um, yeah. It's not going to cost you anything either. You just mm. got to allow access to the spaces. Space. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, I think it's that, that need of taking a risk, that need mm. of maybe suggesting that something else could happen. I mean, I know mm. the money which has gone into Scunthorpe in the past you know, 10 years has gone towards the, um, like the sports academy and, mm. and sports sciences and stuff. And I'm like, yep, that, that's great and everything like that. But no one really forms a business around that. No one, no <laughs> one forms something long lasting. And it becomes this habit, which I've seen from most people I've met from Scunthorpe outside of mm. Scunthorpe, which mm. is you, you get educated mm-hmm. and then you go to a university in a different city because mm-hmm. it's the only place you can go to university and then yeah. you don't return just gone mm. you you nah. you you classify as i got out of Scunthorpe, you know mm-hmm. yeah. and and it's such a shame because mm. you know i mean the steelworks won't last forever nah. you've got that that base you can easily build mm. just by supporting it like you say with if we're providing basic structure and providing mm-hmm. basic access points that's yeah. what it needs and it, it, that's what everyone needs and mm. or i would have needed as, as a teenager or as a you know young adult was mm-hmm. providing those opportunities even just in terms of general art scene you know you think of yeah. the locations you got 2021 you got um lincoln music not lincoln museum scunthorpe museum yeah you know those are the two main art places or they were when i was younger i don't yeah. know idea how to get into those you know yeah couldn't have even yeah. begun to think of how to get into those, <laughs> those locations yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah but having that visible through you know yeah. schools and projects makes it more comforting you know Tells yeah. you to take those risks when you're young yeah. and you've got nothing to lose, rather than yeah. when you get to your, your 40s and 50s and think, oh, well, maybe I'm yeah. a family, so I'm going to have to become yeah. an accountant. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think this is this is the interesting thing because we're, we're busy um, working uh, interesting with with the local. You know, they're kind of partnering with us, the local university, because they've just taken over that campus mm-hmm. or that space in Central Park. You know, that used to be the council building so yeah we're we're looking at um or we are going to sort of launch sort of a school for startups next next month um just as a pilot basically mm-hmm. sort of november and december just to test out what does it look like to actually you know work with the local university and actually you know because a lot of people you know similar to what you you described you know would and and i think this is what the university and, and Scunthorpe has experienced people get their degrees mm-hmm. and they just sit on their degrees. You know, it's the silent scholar, you know? Um, and so I think what we're trying to figure out is how do we, um, um, how do we kind of get in touch with those alumni? Um, how do we sort of maybe that business idea that they worked on as a dissertation, you know, like how do we sort of actually go, Hey, why don't you 
sort of come and be a part of this kind of community and, and test it out. And so that's, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm quite excited about because obviously that's the one in terms of maybe that stage two, you know, stage one is a space. Yeah. Um, stage two is a school for startups. It's about how do we actually develop this informal school? Because I think that's what we need to almost start to do this, this, this informal learning environment that actually gets people just to um, take risks, you know, as young as possible um, when it comes to sort of trying out an idea or trying out a business. Um, and so I think in some ways it's interesting hearing you talk about that because I think that's in some ways something that we're trying to, um, uh, yeah, you know, create. Uh, not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get that. It's kind of, in a way as well, I think those kinds of experiences are, are very um, good in terms of just building confidence of what is possible. I think that's, yeah. that's, that's a huge barrier um, mm. for most people, especially from, from small towns. When you grow up in a city, you see a lot of things. You know, you've got the opportunity to see what different ideas come out and meet a lot of people. Whereas mm. if you're in a smaller community, you do become kind of bubbled. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you look at things and you go, I have no idea how they got to there. Like that, yeah, yeah. surely to do that, I'd have to have hundreds of thousands of pounds. And yeah. that's something that I'm very, um, not prejudiced against, but mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of things which can be done cheaper, but yeah. effectively, you know, like my yeah. own setup is I run it from my house. I have a full-time yeah. job. Everything yeah. I do, I do at a cost, which I would pay, you know, I'm never going to yeah. overcharge for anything. Um, yeah. When I when I print things, I get them done through a local print company, and a lot mm. of that was stuff I just had to figure out as I went along. Yeah, and it, it it becomes this thing of when I speak to people, they're like, "Well, you know, how are you doing this? How are mm. you how are you affording this mm. to actually have it as an idea? You know, what, didn't you show you needed startup money? You needed, you know, you needed a degree. You needed mm. um, training in some way. It's like, well, not really. Most of it was right. just knowing what is available." You know, yeah. it was knowing yeah. that I can print to T-shirts, going to talk yeah. to the print guys because, you know, they were accessible yeah. to me. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. you, you have to build that confidence, especially in younger folk or even older yeah. folk as well. Um, yeah. I, know, I know from talking to kind of my mom, she mm. has all these ideas, like like say we, you um, lady with the cards and stuff. Yeah. Saying, oh, well, you know, it'd be nice to have an online shop. And I'm like, well, why not have an online shop? That's, yeah, yeah. that's a pretty simple thing to do nowadays, yeah. but yeah, yeah. for a mindset which has never really had been through that process, yeah, that's yeah. a big ask. That's that's a yeah, huge absolutely. that's a huge leap to take, yeah. um, where you can just go, oh well, actually, no, you know, it's, it can be as simple as A to B. Yeah. Just, but unless you've ever been shown it, no. you you'd yeah. never know. And, yeah, and people worry about getting scammed and. <laughs> losing money and if you can do it in a way or you can give people opportunities as it sounds like you kind of do in um yeah. where they don't have a financial risk but they just yeah. have things to gain mm. why not yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but i think like you said i think you are coming against that that um you know feeling like it's too good to be true you know and i think you know this this whole idea of you know what's been done at scunthorpe before you know has been yeah. very much um you know kind of fly by night um, type operations. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that, that there is something about sort of actually building, building community and building relationship, because I think a lot of the stuff, like I think, I mean, where the Cosby Collective started was, was at a coffee morning, sort of at a children's center, you know, like that's, that's kind of where the idea was sort of, yeah. it wasn't in a, a cool trendy coffee shop, you know, it was, yeah. um, and I think in, in some ways we have to get back to the roots of actually, what is it and, and, and where do we actually start to talk about some of these ideas? Mm. It's not about, um, you know, uh, yeah, it, 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 I think we need to almost rethink the sort of a lot of the spaces that we have that, that are just, um, just these, these projects that, that actually need, you know, uh, a bigger picture, you know, um, to, to look at. So I think as well, when you kind of, when you approach community work from an aspect of, I mean, not necessarily even if you aren't an outsider when you, you no. bring something which hasn't been done or yeah. an idea you there's a level of honesty you have to achieve with yeah. a community for them to accept you and yeah. i think i mean your situation is is unique obviously because of the pandemic and everything yeah. like that and i think kathy indy did a, a great job of it 
in just that they just opened you know they, mm. they they started doing some things yeah and so the mis the mistrust was easily put away because people mm-hmm. weren't like oh here's someone who's coming along and then they're yeah. suddenly going to charge me hundreds of pounds down the line to have the yeah. space and and, yeah. and kind of access these things or it'll be it'll be done in a year it'll fold yeah. and i think yeah. achieving that level of honesty is 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 key for anything yeah. kind of community yeah. based um yeah and I, th- I think it's valuable in terms of what yeah. you're doing you know, from, yeah. from what I've seen so far. Yeah. The Crosby yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know. I think the, the proof is in the pudding. The proof yes. is in the pudding. Yeah. And the, the sentiment is there, which is good. Mm. I think yeah. That's valuable. I mean, so obviously this, this, this whole podcast will go up in mm. November. Yeah. When's your, do you have a launch date like penciled in or? Yeah. So again, it's, it's building work dependent, but we were basically looking at kind of the last week of November, um, early December. So we want to kind of be open for December essentially just to kind of just before Christmas, obviously try and, um, be what we can, um, before the year's out. And then obviously, um, be kind of up and opening open for, for January, you know, to kind of hit the new year, you know? So yeah, I think that's, that's the, that's the plan. Um, and I think, in some ways we've we've left that idea of sort of everything being perfect for the launch you know we just want to just get something that's workable and ready to go end of november and then and just run with it sort of whatever local lockdown uh, come what may you know so depending lockdown dependent is the new phrase which is uh, exactly it's been coined this year um, i think yeah, every, yeah. every planner make with friends is we should do this in next month <laughs> yeah of course lockdown <laughs> dependent we'll just uh, we'll keep an eye on that oh. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. What, what tier are you in but um yeah. but yeah i mean it's, it's 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 really interesting i mean just just the conversations was, was fascinating because i think i think f- for us uh you know it, it's it's really it started with sort of uh, in some ways a film festival you know we, we actually originally um started the idea which and it was connected to us running kind of a local film festival just to hear the stories of people sort of in the local area and it's kind of morphed into sort of what it is now but i think yeah i think it's it, it has to be for me for this to work um it, it ha- we have to ground it in experience in terms of actually you know what what is it that we do that actually is a response to the lived experiences of people there rather than a reaction you know to it um i think that, that that's key for me yeah, that's a very nice point to round out on as well. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, that brings it brings us nicely to a close. Um, awesome. Obviously, good luck with everything. Thank you. Um, Thank I'm, you. I'm hopefully, when it's open and whatnot, I'll uh, I'll come come see come see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, we still need to talk about good coffee. We do. Need still to need to. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll call this the end of the, the recording. Um, awesome. well, th- thank you for joining me, Tara. Thank you. I appreciate it. Talk to those guys later. <laughs>